Bill Clyke, uh, hello and congratulations to you. Thank you so much. D did you know that you would write while you were serving in Iraq? Well, I always wrote. Um, not about war, necessarily, mm -hmm. but uh, I always wrote stories. I, I tried to write while I was in Iraq. It's not really, <laughs> I didn't do a very good job. And not about war. But when I came back uh, from overseas, a couple months after, I started, I, wrote, I started writing the first story in the book. That quickly? Yeah. Because, I, I mean, I've talked to others and other writers of war in the past, and sometimes it takes a long time to process. You know? Well, I started writing, uh, yeah. <laughs> but uh, it took me about four, a little bit longer than four years to yeah. finish the book. And, and that, that first story that I started writing, uh, I went through about 15 or 20 different versions yeah. before uh, it ended up in its final state. What were you trying to convey? What, what did you want to convey of the, of the experience of, of war? Well, there was no one thing, and part of it was, I mean, everybody has such a small piece of the war, mm -hmm. right? Um, you know, I, I, I have two friends named Matt. Mm -hmm. uh, they were both uh, scouts and cavalry. They both served in the same section of Iraq. They both worked with the same Iraqi translator. And yet, if you talk to them, I mean, their stories couldn't be more different because one was there in 2006, one was there in 2008. Yeah, and made all the difference, right? Right. And yeah. if that's true for them, how true is that for a mm -hmm. chaplain, for mm -hmm. a, a mortuary affairs specialist? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Uh, for an infantryman or an adjutant. Mm -hmm. uh, and I wanted to kind of get at that difference, and the, the, not just the different ways that people experience war, um, but also the, the ways that they experience America when they come home. So the, the interesting way you chose to do that is through these first-person narratives, yeah, right? 12 Every different. story mm -hmm. is 12 different, yeah. These were people, these are sort of based on people you met or knew, or how did you, Th how did you gather no, these stories? Th there, there's no person in the book who, you know, that's yeah. so-and-so, because yeah. I think if I felt like I was writing about a real person, I would feel constrained. Yeah. You know, I feel like I'd have to do justice to that person instead of kind of go down the rabbit hole of what I was trying to explore. So, you know, I'd take things from here and there. I'd, I'd interview Marines and soldiers. I'd read books. Well, you did. You interviewed them so to, to gather their stories. I did, view, yeah. I, I did interview people. I'd have people who knew about the subject read the story, and then I'd, mm -hmm. I'd make things up. I'd read books that had nothing to do with war, but yeah. that helped inform, you know, what my characters might be going through. Yeah. Um, and then just, you know, rewrote the stories in different drafts, sent them out to friends. Yeah. It was a long process. And, and of course, there's the, there's the language of the military, right? right? And, yeah. and that the soldiers use. And Definitely. So it's, it's a, something to use, I guess, and play with as well. Well, yeah, there's a, <laughs> there's a very particular way that the military speaks. There's a lot of profanity, a lot of acronyms. Yeah. So, yeah. you know, my mother, uh, she read the book. She said, I liked it very much. You used a lot of words you weren't allowed to use growing up. Uh -huh. <laughs> uh -huh. yeah. Uh -huh. It's the Marine Corps, yeah. Um, but you know, trying to get the rhythms of the speech and the way that people interpret that experience, yeah. um, and you know, with the, with the profanity, there's there's a thing where you got an 18 or 19 year old person who's seeing a lot of the things that happen in war, which are obscene. Yeah. Yeah. The language that they're going to use to try and describe that is is going to match it, um, and so you know, the you know, sort of young grunt character is going to talk in one way, an older chaplain who's trying to work through some of the things that the right. guys are, are dealing with, he's going right. to talk in an entirely different way. And that was very important for me, trying to figure out who these people were. You know, one of the things that comes through is, um, on the one hand, a, a kind of cluelessness sometimes mm -hmm. from uh, uh, somebody serving. You know, you don't know what's going on, you know, what right. are you doing here? But then an intense awareness and intelligence of what, of what, what they're all about. And an awareness of the world in a way that we don't often see it. Right. There's, a, there's a, a, a section there of the character talking about walking down the street, and I could what is it, I could see a dime. I could spot a dime in the yeah. street twenty yards yeah. away. Yeah. yeah. Which was told to me by a um, yeah. by a friend of mine uh, who'd served in the Second Battle of Fallujah. Right. Because he's on patrol, and mm -hmm. and it matters. He has to be that aware, yeah. uh, not just to protect himself, but also also the men around him. Yeah. Um, and then he you know he carries that state with him. Uh, when he comes back home, you know, immediately after he comes back home. Yeah, and so much of the stories become about the coming back home and the, right. some of the difficulties of that. Was it was that hard for you? It's uh, you know I, I was a staff officer. It was it wasn't as hard as it was for for some other people certainly yeah. uh, that I knew. But it's definitely there's a, there's a disconnect. It's very peculiar to go to go back to New York. Right, and I live next to uh, TQ Surgical, where they would bring in wounded, not just Americans, but also Iraqis, mm -hmm. uh, sometimes insurgents. And you know, to see that level of um, violence done to people, mm -hmm. and then walk down Madison Avenue uh, with zero sense that you're at war, that's very strange. 
it's also strange to get out of the military, go live your civilian life. Um, you know, I went into the Northeast. Every once in a while, somebody tells me I'm the first Iraq or Afghanistan veteran they've met. Really? Right? Yeah. And yet, you know people who are going back time and time again. Right? Mm -hmm. Sometimes you find out that something very bad has happened. To well, them. there is, of course, a lot of talk about the disconnect between the mm -hmm. military and the civilian population. I mean, you, you, you see it. Right. Is it something that worries you? Well, you know, it, it, it does, and I think that's part, of, that's part of the reason why I wanted to write the book, was to, uh, to try and talk with people and start conversations about the experience of war and to invite people to imagine different mm -hmm. experiences. Because, I mean, it's important just for, for understanding and thinking about the young veterans in our communities, but also, um, you know, Marines don't issue themselves orders. We as a country are responsible, we as mm -hmm. citizens are responsible for, you know, what we push our elected leaders to do, mm -hmm. whether we hold them accountable. And so I think that, um, you know, there's a lot of veteran writers out there who are, you know, trying to, to share those experiences, reach out to, you know, civilian audiences, and there's some civilian authors who, who've been doing the exact same thing. Mm -hmm. And it's actually really gratifying to see let me just ask you finally about yourself, because you, you win a big award with your very first book. <laughs> so that, that's got to be a little surprising, perhaps terrifying as to what happens next. <laughs> <laughs> well, yeah, we'll see. <laughs> it was, it was uh, yeah, it was quite a, quite a surprise uh -huh. um, and a do very you, good one. Do you see yourself writing more about, about war, about I'm, that experience? I'm, I'm going to keep writing. We'll see, we'll see what it's about. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah. Okay. We'll, we will see. <laughs> Phil Clyde's book is Redeployment and winner of the National Book Award. Thanks a lot and congratulations. Thank you so much. Thanks for having me.